all right guys so welcome to today's video and in today's video we will start a completely brand new series on how to create a one piece game okay and this is the third version already because i wasn't satisfied with the first one and i was a little bit more satisfied with the second one but not as satisfied as i wanted it to be because we didn't really implement client or application and implementing them uh, implementing that now so at this point of time is a shit ton of work that's the reason why i've decided to start a completely new place where we also implement client replication guys now with that being said okay i'm gonna show you the same things i'm gonna show you how to make a menu okay so let's start off with that and then i'm gonna show you some other things in the future episodes guys so stay tuned with that Okay, so the first thing what you want to do is that you want to create a completely brand new place right here. Now, delete everything you have in here, add a new part, and that is actually up to you now on uh, on creating a scene right here, okay? So what I'm going to do is that uh, I'm mainly focusing on scripting, okay? That's the reason why I'm just going to take some random models from the toolbox, okay? Call it free model game, whatever you want. Call it whatever you want, guys. I don't fucking care. I'm just here to show you how to script everything at the end, okay? So, I'm going to be adding a block mesh in here to create some kind of ocean. So, block mesh. Increase the scale on X and Z axis. Change the color to something bluish. Change the material if you want to. Now, if the scales if the scale is too much, then you will have this uh, distortion right here. So lower the scale to make it look normal. There you go. Now I'm gonna be adding some free models in here. So one piece skybox, for example. I'm not I'm not here to create a skybox, guys. I'm here to show you how to create a game and not a skybox. So that's the reason why I'm just, why I'm just, why I'm just gonna take this one actually make this a little bit more light yeah there we go that is perfect now the next thing i'm gonna add is the thousand sunny as a model so this one contains scripts let's take this one then also shout outs to retronic and one piece guy box come on so i i, I want to credit the owners wait man there we go Auroras, yeah, I, I know this guy. I know, I know this guy. I know this guy from back then. But yeah. So, just quickly wanted to credit them for sharing this amazing stuff with us. And there you go. So, this is our Thousand Sunny right here. Now, if you want to, you can add Luffy, Nami, Robin, I don't know, all of the crew members in here. Okay. Now, I'm going to show you how to create a camera and focus on one certain scene. So, first of all, make sure that everything right here is anchored so everything is anchored as it should now decide on how your scene is going to look like so is your camera going to face this way this way or this way okay so decide on that i'm actually going to add luffy in here so that we can create a good scene in here now let's take a time skip luffy in here all right so apparently had connection issues now I was able to add this model in here. So we have added this one. Shoutouts to Cuffler. And what we're going to do now is that we are going to make Luffy sit on this part right here. And we are going to move on with the camera positioning. Okay. So. Left leg. There we go. Now let's position the arms. There we go, guys. There we go. Let's take the head. 
let's tilt the head down a little move it right here there we go guys there we go now the only thing we have to do now is that we have to create the camera so how is this going to work out what we want to do is that we want to create a server script okay script now there are actually multiple ways to do this wait can i change something in here permission yeah i cannot cannot really change it Nah, okay never mind then uh let's actually do it this way then let's put a local script in here and let's create a part okay now this this step is pretty important so if you have determined the position where your camera is gonna stay into then you have to create a part okay this part now is gonna represent your camera so you want to rotate it then and you want to position it towards the the scene your camera was just facing to okay so imagine that this is your camera and this would be the angle and the position your camera would have once you are inside of the menu okay so that's what i wanted to tell you so pretend that this is your camera anchor this one make sure that can collide is false anchor is true and to make sure that it is transparent that is very important and name this camera part if you want to now the next step is to go inside of this local script and then we want to create a variable okay this variable c is gonna refer to our camera port so workspace.camera port i recommend you to use a wait for child because the client right here so everything which starts with starter is client sided and the client tends to load a bit faster than the rest of uh, the server right here and then what will happen is that it would try to refer to the camera part although this client has loaded faster than the camera part probably and then this camera part is non-existent as of the time of reference okay of referring to the camera part means the camera part is not is non-existent you're trying to refer to it boom it leads to an error that's just all i had to say that's the reason why we want to add a wait for child because it waits or it pauses the whole script until this part right here is edited now the thing is with wait for child if this part is, is never edited then it will pause the whole script forever okay but in this case it is existent therefore we do not have to care about that case okay so we have the camera port next thing we want to store inside of our next variable called cam is going to be the camera so workspace current camera okay you don't you do not have to do wait for child on this one because it is not a physical instance now what you want to do then is that we want to add a little weight a little weight right here okay let's let's add a weight of two and then we would like to go ahead and now wait actually cut the cut the weight let's do cam camera type cryptable okay what this does let me demonstrate this to you is there a spawner in here no okay then let's let's add let's, let's add a spawner quickly so model spawn where is it where is the spawner okay that is that is okay so what what this camera type scriptable does is that when i open up the camera right here and when i scroll down to the camera type part right here as you can see it's currently at custom now when i use scriptable i'm not able to to move my camera okay and that is what, what we want to achieve so we want the player to be completely focused on the scene down here not being able to move the camera whatsoever that is the reason why we use scriptable all right that's just to quickly demonstrate what this camera type is all about now next thing we'd like to do is that we would like to change the c-frame and a c-frame is basically the position so the current frame the position of our camera and since we have changed the type to scriptable and we are now changing the c-frame to something else the player's camera is then stuck to this position to the c-frame and we want to change the c-frame to our c parts so camera parts c frame right here and let's just quickly see how this is going to look like and didn't work out because we have to add the weight so we gotta wait until 
the player is loaded right here and i also have to add a spawner again but i'm gonna show you how to how to deal with this later on okay as you can see we have now waited two seconds and our camera has changed but we are not seeing the scene we are seeing something else now the problem is that where's our port it is right here so instead of facing towards this it is facing towards this so all we gotta do is that we have to rotate it i think i think at least <laughs> if this doesn't work i have i have an alternative solution which is gonna work out fine it did work out okay so we we just had to rotate it that's all we had to do and as you can see it is now focused on our scene right here now we can spice things a little bit up by messing with some some camera properties right here okay i'm gonna be explaining this in a bit do not worry i, I just want to write it down and see if it works if it works then i'm gonna explain it to you There we go. So now we have this zoom in and out, as you can see. Now, let's increase the time in here so that the zoom actually looks more natural and more smooth. Instead of just looking like a real smooth, uh, a real zoom right here. As you can see, it now looks smoother and more natural. Now, the more you increase the time, the more smoother and natural it will look. So let's increase it to six and I'm going to explain to you on what this is about, okay? Then we are going to move on with the next stuff in the next episode probably and as you can see that's the effect i've just added so this, this slow zoom out and zoom back in okay and now i'm going to explain to you what i've done so there is this thing called tween service so let me just explain to you what the tween service is so that you guys understand okay so when we have for example a part right here a part has properties okay as you can see we have a list of properties in here from reflectance to transparency to the size to the c frame whatsoever okay let's pick the transparency as an example so when you want to change the transparency you have zero and you have one and you have all of the numbers in between so 0 0.5 0 0.4 0 0.7 whatsoever now, when you change from one state of a property, so the property is transparency, its current state is zero, okay? When you change from the state of zero to the state of one, you can either do this by immediately changing from zero to one, or you can take things slowly and change to, to, uh, to 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, and then one, okay? See the difference? So from 0 to 1, or from 0 to 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, point, nah, 0 0.8 and 1. So in the second run, we have a transition in between. And this transition now is being created via the tween service. Now, the problem with this example was that the, trans the, the transition was not really smooth. So we, we, we always had an additional of 0.2 transparency added onto the current state of transparency okay but the tween service really makes that transition more smooth okay and that is why we're using the tween service for now what we are doing right here is basically that we are just changing the the camera's property called field of view from 70 to 80 very 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 smoothly within six seconds and then we are reversing this again Okay, so then we go from 80 to 70 again. And that is all we do with this tween service. Now, and let me explain you all of the elements of this line, okay? T 
is the variable game get service tween service so the tween service is a service as the name already suggests and in order to refer to the service you gotta apply this get service function on game and then the name of the service you would like to refer to and now this tween service has a function called create and this creates a tween and a tween as i've already explained to you is this transition now this tween needs some settings so it needs to know what on, on what kind of instance it is operating on in this case it is this camera instance now tween info dot new so this second argument is or are the settings you want to apply on the tween so the first setting is the time it, it takes which is going to be six seconds so it takes six seconds to go from field of view 70 to field of view 80 and since this tween is reversed, it also takes six another seconds to go from 80 to 70. And since it is reversed, it takes another six seconds to go from 70 to 80 again, and so on and so on. So six is the wait time. Now we have something called easing style. You can look this up on the developer hub. There are there are another there are another no nah, there are much more easing styles out there. Also underlined with GIFs whatsoever, as you can see, we have a bunch of in here. So back, bound, circular, cubic, elastic, exponential, linear, quad, quart, quint, sine. So those are all easing styles you can take a look on. They also have GIFs in there, so you can see in video format how these easing styles behave. Now, we also have easing directions. Okay, I just like to pick linear and out as my, as my personal default easing styles and easing directions. Now, they also have a bunch of other e easing directions in there. Wait, do they? I don't know. But I only know of in and out, so they might have a bunch of others. In, out, and in, out. So, okay. Those are the three main easing directions. So, you can look them up as well. They also have a bunch of GIFs right there on uh, on how they on how these single easing directions behave. Next thing is going to be the repeat count. And this repeat count... As the name suggests, tells you or determines on how much this tween is going to repeat itself. Now, since we want this to be infinite, we just add math.huge, which symbolizes a very, very, very big number. Okay? The last thing is going to be reverses. And reverses determines whether this thing is reversed or not. And it is. So we want it to, to go back. So from 70 to 80, from 80 to 70. And since we have a very, very high amount of repeats, this just repeats itself over and over and over and over again. Okay, so that's all about the second argument. The third argument within those curly brackets determines the state you want to achieve. As I've already emphasized to you with this part, a property can have certain states. The default state is that the transparency is zero, so zero as the default state. Now, when you want to tween something, you want a certain state to be achieved. Let's say you want this to be invisible. So state one is your goal state. And you define this goal state in here, okay? In this case, our default state is field of view equals 70, as you can see right here. And our goal state is field of view 80. And once this is achieved, due to it being reversed it just reverses back to the default state which is 70 and then due to it having a high amount of repeats the, it just repeats the same step over and over again and that's it guys that's all about the tween service and i wanted to explain this in detail because i have the feeling that many of my subscribers do not know what the tween service is about and i took a lot of time to explain it but yeah that's just my my style of explaining stuff and dealing with videos whatsoever now guys with that being said thanks for watching thanks for listening whatsoever expect the second part to come out pretty soon with that being said subscribe like comment see ya